Welcome to Land a House. I'm Seth. This is a ram pump. It's a water pump that does not need fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. I'll have links to this in the description down below if you want to pick one up for yourself. Today I want to talk about what happens to a ram pump if it's in a big rainstorm and potential ways you can keep your pump from getting damaged. So let me show you a pump that got really damaged over here and then we will take a tour of my current ram pump setup and see what needs to be fixed after the last rain. So let's get into it. Last year around this time we had 25 inches of rain in 24 hours. Now I know that's a unusual storm, but what happened was I had my ram pump set up down here, this one right here, and uh, when the wall of water came down, it got sticks and debris stuck against the pressure tank, and that just ripped the whole system out. A lot of times what happens is the pressure tank will break off of the rest of the pump and be sent down the river somewhere. So. In my case, this creek normally runs somewhere between 50 and 100 gallons a minute, so it's not a very big creek. However, if you're installing a ram pump into a creek that has, say, 1,000 gallons a minute, then even a small rain can cause a lot of damage. So I will uh, talk to you about a way to fix that issue or prevent damage in just a bit. But anyway, this was my old pump, and it got uh, damaged, and uh, I probably will just throw these components away because um, it's not really any good now. I found that one of the very first things that happens after a big storm is that silt piles up against the intake of the ram pump. Or even worse, the intake of the ram pump gets picked up and swept away and all of your supply pipe or drive pipe gets bunched up and ruined. In my case, the storm wasn't that bad and I just have a lot of this gross, icky, stuff right here. This is uh, silt that has come down the mountain and clogged up some of my intake. So what I want to do is just brush this away so that I have more water going into my intake and uh, less of it just skipping on by. We had one really bad rain and then it's kind of been a drought ever since and so the flow rate going into my system is actually quite low. I hear it gulping a lot of air down here but not a lot I can do about that. But what I want to do is just uh, come back here and clean up any silt or sediment that is stuck around here. Just get this pushed off to the side. I have found over the years that if you place flat rocks over your intake, it will help to prevent sticks and leaves from getting stuck to the screen. So that is something that could be helpful in your installation. One thing that a lot of people don't realize is that the ram pump itself does not have to be in the water to operate. As long as you have the source in the water pulling that water downhill and you've got enough head pressure, which is the drop between the uh, source intake and where the pump is, the pump can be on the bank and so can the supply pipe and the drive pipe. So let's say in my case, I have my intake right here in my creek. I could put some rebar down or some concrete blocks around it to hold it in place so it doesn't wash out during a storm. And then after a few feet, I can move my pipe onto the bank. And that way it is out of the water and less likely to be caught by a tree branch or a lot of strong water and wash it down. So just keep that in mind that you can um, keep the pipes out of the water and that will hopefully help to prevent loss if your system were to experience a big storm. Now my creek is very small and I'm not very concerned about the pipes being washed out at this point, but here's an example of the supply pipe not being in the water. You can see it comes off of this rock and goes up there on land. So it doesn't really have to follow the exact path of the uh, creek. The main thing is you want to get as much of the air out of that as possible as it goes down the, uh, the water here. In my system, I use something called a filter bucket, and it is another product I have for sale for the ram pump. It does two things. It helps get the air bubbles out of the system so that the drive pipe doesn't have air going down it. It also has a certain amount of space at the bottom of the bucket, which allows for silt buildup. So it works fantastic with the system, although buckets tend to be 
buoyant and affected by flood water. So in this case, mine got tipped over when that rush of water came down and now I have to uh, reposition it here. Filter buckets are not always necessary in a ram pump install, but in uh, smaller creeks like what I've got, they are very handy because that helps to get the air bubbles out of here. So uh, you can see this has gathered a good bit of silt, which you do not want in your ram pump. I'm just going to uh, empty that out real quick. Now, previously I had this up on the rock. We'll see if it'll go back up there. The first pipe that is coming down from the source is called the supply pipe, and it is supplying water to this bucket. You can see it's almost full in there. From the bucket, you then have the drive pipe, and that's what drives the ram pump operation. We will follow that down and get to the pump here in a moment. But as you can see, we have more than enough water flowing to get this ram pump going. You can also hear bubbles coming out of it, which means this bucket is doing its job. Any one of those bubbles would stop the ram pump. And so having this filter bucket is necessary in my setup. Just like the supply pipe, the drive pipe does not have to be in the water for the ram pump to operate. You can see my water is over here on this side, but my drive pipe goes right over here. That also helps to reduce the amount of curves and bends and twists that I have in my pipe. So instead of having to go over here to the left, I can just go straight onto the ram pump. So that right there is another good way of preventing flood waters from washing out your pump. I'm now down at the ram pump and luckily that storm did not wash this out. So uh, I can say though, after a good rain, it is very common for silt to get into the pump right here. So one thing that it's good to do is pull your pump out of the water for just a moment. And I'm going to disconnect the delivery pipe. Um, the delivery pipe is the pipe that goes uphill. The reason I want to do that is because I'm going to drain out the water that's in here because it's most likely got a lot of silt on the first 15 or 20 feet. So let's see how dirty this water is. Actually, it's not bad. So, all right, I'm gonna close that back up. And uh, sometimes I need to drain the water out of the pump here. So let's do that. After about one to two months of operation, it's important to drain the pressure tank because it will get waterlogged over time. Typically in normal operation, there is only, well, for instance, in this one inch pump, there is only about four to six inches of air space. Everything else is water and that's just normal. So don't be worrying about that. All right, I'm gonna get the delivery pipe hooked back up here. All right, now it's time to get the pump up and running again. In order to start the pump, I'm going to turn on the drive pipe. Water will splash out the waste valve. I need to press this a few times. I've already got my delivery pipe full, so it should not take much. But if you don't have your delivery pipe full, you have to push this a lot of times, sometimes over a hundred times before it's full and ready to go. When the weight of the flap starts getting lighter, you know you're getting closer to having the pump running on its own. One very quick thing you can do to make sure the pump itself is working properly, if you keep pushing this and nothing is happening, like it just stays closed, you can reach down here and turn off the delivery pipe. Now it's just the pump itself working without a delivery. If I push this and it starts to work on its own, then we know that the pump is not the problem. So. See how it's now cycling all by itself? Pressure is building in the tank. That means I don't quite have enough water in my delivery pipe to uh, keep back pressure on the pump. So that means with this open, I'm gonna have to just keep pressing this until water gets up top. I now have my ram pump back up and running after a heavy rain. 
So what are a few things that you can do to help prevent your ram pump from being washed out or damaged during the storm? Let's start with the intake. You may have seen how my intake was a long piece of PVC pipe with some screen around it. That shape helps the water to pass over your intake and not catch it as bad. You can put some rocks on there and hold it in tight. You could even put some rebar over it and hammer that down into the creek bed and it will help to prevent that from washing out. You can also take your screened intake on a bigger water source, like a, a bigger creek, move it closer to the bank instead of putting it right in the middle. So hopefully there is less flow in that spot and won't be prone to wash out your intake. The intake really is the only thing that you have to have in the water. Everything else can be put up on the bank as long as you've got enough head pressure, which is drop from the source down to the pump. Now, if you've got very minimal head pressure, you may have to have your system in the water. But a lot of times, if you can gain that extra couple of feet and then move your pipes over, it's less likely to be washed out in a bad storm. Now, if you do move your pump out of the creek, but you wanna have the water from the waste valve go back into the water of the creek, you can put a T fitting on top of the waste valve. And that way you can still access the valve to press it but it'll send the water back through a pipe to the creek. So that's just one little trick you can use if you don't want your yard or the side of the creek getting uh, washed away. If there's no way around having your ram pump in the water, you can take some two by fours and prop them against the pressure tank and then use some guy wires out to hold the pump in place. You'll have to make sure you go down and check on it because if debris gets stuck to that structure, you'll want to pull it off as soon as possible. But that is a way to add a little bit more strength and structure to the ram pump. Some people will also take good sized rocks and make a little uh, protective uh, U-shape in front of the pump so that the main source of the water goes around and doesn't interfere with the pump itself. So there are a few little tips and tricks you can use to keep your pump safe during heavy rains. Now that I've got my ram pump back up and running here in the creek with about seven feet of drop, I'm gonna walk up the hill, 35 feet of lift, and see the water coming out up there. In the meantime, remember that I do have four different sizes of ram pump available. I'll have a link in the description down below. You can get those on my Landa House website, Amazon, and eBay. Just for your reference, the ram pump is about 100 feet over here in the creek. The delivery pipe comes through the road culvert, as you can see right here, and then it heads up the hill with a total lift of about 35 feet way up here into the woods, and that's where my tank is. I then use that pressure to come back down the hill and use for gardening or use for testing more ram pumps. But let's walk up there and I'll show you the delivery pipe. I've made it to the top of the hill where I have my off-grid water tower. This is about 35 feet above the creek, and that's the amount of lift that I have to overcome with that seven foot of head pressure down at the creek. So we can step up here real quick and you can hear the amount of water coming into the top of the tank. It's pretty decent for the uh, ratios that I've got. Now I do have three pipes on this tank. One pipe brings the water to the top of the tank and lets it fall down in to fill it up. The second pipe comes out to take the water back downhill so I can use it wherever I need to. And lastly, I have an overflow pipe, which I will show you that as well. The pipe here on this side is bringing water up from the ram pump, goes to this little connector to keep it in place, spins around and goes into the top of the tank. From the bottom of the tank, I used a two inch Fernco connector to connect to this adapter and that brings the water back downhill to wherever I need to use it. The last pipe is this stand pipe. It goes up to the point where I want the water to stop filling and then that pipe just takes it over and dumps it over into the woods. This ground here is very dry and it soaks up this much water very quickly. Now that might not look like a lot of water, but you have that over 24 seven and it is going to fill up this tank quite quick.
And that's all I've got for you today. I hope this video was helpful in keeping your ram pump safe during big storms. If it was, hit that thumbs up button, leave me a comment down below, and I will see you in the next video.